So good morning everybody. Today I'm in search of what is arguably Britain's most dangerous wild animal. It's been responsible for deaths and for a number of serious injuries. Yet I hope to convince you that it's a placid animal that's deserving not only of our respect but also our support. This is Steve Dealey for Wild Walks in search of Britain's wild adders. This is a wild adder. It's a male, showing the characteristic series of black diamonds down his back that are all you need to identify an adder in the wild. Adders are cold-blooded and need the sun's warmth to be able to move quickly and even to digest their prey. Able to climb trees and even swim, adders will feed on frogs, toads and lizards, on small mammals and on the chicks of ground-nesting birds, using a powerful venom that can even affect humans. So, let's address the elephant in the room. Are adders really dangerous? Well, they carry a venom, but the adder is a true viper. It has a set of hollow fangs that lie horizontal in its mouth, and then when it wants to bite, they release, swing forwards and down, and it can inject the venom with them. But to put it into context, every year 30,000 people die from snake bite in sub-Saharan Africa. In the UK, four people have died from adabite in the last 100 years, so the risk is very low. Most people who get bitten by an adder get bitten for one of two reasons. Either they're in a place like this where there are adders, they don't realise they're there, and they put their hand down on a tussock of grass or something that's got an adder in it, and the adder reacts by biting them. Or they will find an adder when it's cold in the mornings when the adders are sluggish and don't move very quickly and believe that the adder is either dead or injured and pick it up. There was a case not so long ago of a man who found an adder on the road. The road's concrete, it's quite cold, the adder was cold and sluggish. He picked the adder up and stuck it in his pocket and of course his body heat then warmed the adder up, it became active, he put his hand in his pocket and the adder bit him. So. These are animals that are entirely safe to be around as long as you treat them with respect. I've spent hundreds of hours in the company of adders and I've never once been bitten. You just need to be cautious and careful and sensible about how you approach. Most people who've been bitten by an adder say it's painful and compare it to something like a bee sting. But if you're unlucky enough to be allergic to the venom, then an adder bite can be very serious indeed. So as a safety measure, if you're bitten by an adder, you should always seek immediate medical support. So I found my first adder. Um, she's down at the base of these brambles and bushes here, sheltered out of the wind but getting the sun. Um, she's a snake that I call Boudicca because she's a strong and independent and very powerful female and she undoubtedly rules the roost around here. This is Boudicca. Even though it's cold enough for me to see my breath, She's found some dry grass to lie on in a spot which the sun is just starting to hit. Unless she's disturbed, she'll spend several hours here, basking. But I can see that her eye is a pale blue colour rather than the normal red. She's about to shed her skin. Adders shed their skins up to four times a year, and to do so, they stretch their old skin to loosen it, then catch their nose on something like a thorn or a sharp rock, and slide right out of it like someone pulling a stocking off a leg. If you ever find an adder skin, it's inside out compared to the way it was when the adder was wearing it. But as part of their skin, an adder's eyes are covered by a transparent scale. When they're about to shed, they pump fluid beneath this to literally lift the scales from their eyes. During this period, adders are almost blind and may be unusually aggressive. So when I'm looking for adders, this is the sort of thing that I'm looking for. This kind of grass tussock landscape, or um, often they're found in stands of bracken as well. But what you're looking for are places where they are sheltered from the wind, but the sun can still reach them. The sun's just nipped behind a cloud at the moment, but it'll be out in a second. But 
In places like this, the grass tussocks shelter the adder from the prevailing winds, but they can still get the sun on their bodies and start to warm up. So your best time and chance of seeing adders is usually in the morning when the day is just starting to warm up, when the sun is just starting to hit the ground in places like this, and then you can come and have a look for them. I tend to stick my back to the sun and then try and see where the sun is going but the wind can't get to. And more often than not, that's where I'll find adders basking. Boudicca has now been joined by a male adder. Adders are sexually dimorphic, which means that males and females appear very different. Females are much larger, and usually a chocolate brown colour with dark brown diamonds down their backs. Males are much smaller, and an olive green or silvery white colour with black diamonds. This male will not stray far from Boudicca now. He's waiting for her to come into heat, at which point he will fight any other male that comes near her for the right to mate. I was privileged to see this the previous summer. Here, the silvery grey male is writhing on top of a female. He's trying to persuade her to mate with him, but she seems unreceptive and unimpressed by his moves. But she is broadcasting pheromones that other male adders can detect from hundreds of metres away. They announce her readiness to mate, and it's not long before a second male appears to challenge the first for the right to mate with her. Shortly afterwards, both male adders disappeared into the grass, racing alongside each other to see who was fittest. If a race doesn't decide it, the adders will rise up and try and push each other down in the famed dance of the adders. Adders are vulnerable to their own venom, so competing males will never bite each other. To do so would end the adder as a species. On this occasion though, the race was all that was needed and the first male reappeared shortly afterwards, his rival vanquished. Adders at this time of year are basking, in the case of the males, to ripen and create their sperm, and in the case of the females, to create the eggs. Now, adders are an unusual species in that once they're mated, the female will retain the eggs inside her until they hatch, and then she'll give birth to live young, later on in the year, July, August, somewhere around there. The young emerge fully formed and they even have venom, so they're capable of hunting right from the offset, which is important because there's no such thing as parental care in the world of adders. This is a young adder, perhaps a year old. It won't develop its very different male and female colouring for another year or so. This young adder has been almost bitten in two, probably by a fox or a badger. But young adders are resilient and this one will survive the injury. So what I have down here now are two male adders and these two males are lying on top of each other literally quite literally circled on top of one another and that's not unusual at all for adders at this time of year they're quite cooperative until they get the scent of a female who may be receptive nearby and at that point all bets are off and they will fight for dominance sadly Britain's adders are under significant threat and may well go extinct within the next 20 to 30 years there are three reasons for this. Firstly, following lockdown, many more people are getting out into the countryside and previously quiet habitat is being disturbed by dog walkers and mountain bikers. Secondly, populations like this one are becoming isolated, hemmed in by busy roads like the one you can hear in the background and by human infrastructure. Isolated populations become inbred and their diminished gene pool means that a disease which affects one will affect all. The third reason, surprisingly, is climate change. You would think that a cold-blooded reptile would welcome a warming world, but it is warming in the winter. Adders, particularly the males, are leaving brumation too early, before their prey species are available, and living off their fat reserves instead, weakening themselves before the all-important mating season. So here's a mystery I've not personally been able to solve, which is that I've never seen adders in any site that doesn't have this stuff. This is sphagnum moss. It's found in damp areas and it absorbs far more than its own weight in water. And for some reason I've never found adders in a place that doesn't have it. And I often find adders basking on buns like this one which have got sphagnum moss on them. Now for a cold-blooded reptile to like a damp environment it seems a bit counterintuitive to me. I don't know whether it's because that's where the prey items are, or because it's, whether it's because adders just like us like a comfy bed. Who knows? If somebody knows, let me know. 
I found my second female of the day. She's basking just on the side of this bund behind me here. Um, I guess she's probably about 18 inches long, so not the largest female on the site, but not a small one either. And she will stay there probably for quite a long time because the wind is quite cold, but she's nestled into the grass so that the wind isn't touching her, but her coils are getting the benefit of the sun. And what you will sometimes see with adders is that they will sit there for a while and bask and then they'll turn around, a bit like um, ice cream being poured into a cone from one of those ice cream machines, and they'll turn themselves around so that the parts of the coils of the snake that were in the sun then move into the shade and the other parts get a chance to warm up. So the female here knows perfectly well that I'm here. Snakes can feel vibration in the ground through their bodies. So she will have felt our footsteps coming from quite some time, some distance away, which is why we're not going to go any closer at the moment so we don't disturb her. But the sun has just gone in and it's getting quite cold again. And I think she's probably going to go in herself in a minute. And if she does that, I'll see if I can get some video a bit closer to her because it won't be me disturbing her. Look at the size of these grass tussocks and see just how easily the adder disappears into one. So I've had a fantastic day today. I've seen a total of nine adders which for an area like this is not bad going at all. This is Steve Dealey for Wild Walks at an undisclosed location in Gloucestershire. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.